Did anyone check out that crazy clip of Zack Snyder on Joe Rogan's podcast the other day? You know, Mr. Snyder just reveling in the fact that he wanted to deconstruct Batman in Batman vs. Superman and making Batman a mass murdering lunatic? Like, people are always like, well, Batman, I, Batman can't kill, right? So Batman can't kill is canon. And I'm like, okay, well, the first thing I want to do when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds crazy. But it seems Sunner wanted to go against the norm of what Batman is established as. This is what makes Batman so great. Becoming justice, but not overstepping that line of taking a life. Or that's what creator Bob Kane had in mind. Truthfully, he's probably rolling around in his goddamn grave for Pete's sake. Let's be honest, we don't like seeing our favorite superhero killing and straight up murking fools when it goes against their moral code. While it may work for Frank Castle aka The Punisher, or The Watchman's Comedian, it sure doesn't work for the one and only Dark Knight. Or does it? Look, I don't want to start a forum brawl, but let's be real. Batman is a cold-blooded killer in multiple iterations, mostly stemming from his live-action filmography. Oh boy, did I just start the fire? Yes, the fire rises. And while you Snyder haters and naysayers whine and wallop about dear old Zacky's iteration of Batman, why is it now that we all make a fuss about Batman killing, when in reality, he started his oath breaking back in 1989, in Tim Burton's Batman? Why do the keyboard warriors and know-it-alls decide to destroy the best live-action narration of the Cape Crusader to date with Batfleck? And before you say, well, Batman doesn't kill besides Zack Snyder. Don't worry guys, Detective Bally Books is on the case and I'm always down to drop some fucking facts. Let's get to it, shall we? When it came to Michael Keaton's Batman, this guy was absolutely ruthless. When any so-called Batman says, but Batman does a kill, Michael Keaton's response would be, hold my fucking batarang and watch me bury these fools. This so-called vigilante would drop bombs from within his Batmobile on people. Who could forget that scene as the Batmobile takes off in blazing glory inside an imploding industrial factory where Joker's goons become ash and rubble? Let me guess, they were too slow to run away from the flames, right? Or how about when he finally gets to Joker and instead of letting him get away to fight another day, he decides to himself, huh? Might as well just finish it for good right here. Screw sequels, let's off the cackling bastard right now. Batman takes out his grappling hook and ties Joker's legs around the gargoyle as he's climbing onto an ascending helicopter ladder. This results in the gargoyle deciding to break off, causing Joker's arms to tire out and taking a sky-high nosedive to the streets below. This ain't no crime fighter, guys. This Batman literally told Joker to fuck himself and straight up killed him. I mean, I guess we could say he's square for avenging the death of his parents, right? I hate him. There he is! I hate him. He's right here! He's right here, look! You have a lot of nerve to show your face well, yeah, you here. Got, you know. Maybe give him a pass in this installment and stick to his no-kill rule in the sequel? Thank God for Batman Returns. Actually, no wait, scratch that. Think again, guys. In Batman Returns, Michael Keane's Batman decides to up the ante and lets his bloodlust take hold tenfold. Why put away baddies when you could just ignite them in flames? The Batmobile launches two goons through a plate glass window only for Batman to say, nah, I ain't done yet. His Batmobile has a rotating cylinder underneath his vehicle to turn itself around. How convenient, right? When Batman turns on the Bat Thruster, the flames obliterate Penguin's henchmen. The poor bastard just became quick goose on Christmas Eve. And you know damn well, no Gothamites are gonna help put out the flames. They're gonna let that motherfucker burn. Makes no sense, why is this dude randomly blowing fire at someone who is encased in armor with high capacity firepower. He's practically begging to become human mulch. Who could forget the strong man who eats Batman's fist for breakfast? Looks like Batman's fisty cups ain't no match for this circus freak. But wait, Batman has a great idea. Let me just plant a bomb to this dude's chest and punch him into a manhole which explodes and turns this guy into human confetti. Straight fucking savage from Keaton. And lastly, it wouldn't be a Batman film without taking out the main baddie. Batman sends out his handy dandy bats, which knock Penguin through a window, and sends him into a watery abyss below. Technically, he doesn't die, yet, but we can blame Batman's actions causing the death of Oswald. Let's just call it involuntary manslaughter for good measure. If you think watching Schumacher's absolute camp flick Batman Forever would escape the killings and stick to Batman's comic book morals and ideals, hate to break it to you, you're dead wrong.
When Riddler and Two-Face's private island becomes a total train wreck failure, and Batman is about to call it a night after saving Robin and Chase Meridian, Two-Face decides to ruin his parade. As Harvey flips his coin and about to lay waste to his enemies below, Batman takes out a bunch of coins and tosses them up in the air. How do you even store that many coins in your goddamn suit? This causes Two-Face to lose sight of the original coin, stumble, and plummet a few hundred feet into sharp and jagged rocks below. I gotta give him credit though, that guy sure can catch a coin while dead in the water. I bet Robin was also thinking, the fuck? Dad, this is Doug, a guy that I'm dating. The fuck? As Batman literally stole his kill. What makes it even more of a headache is Batman telling Robin not to be killer throughout the whole film, and decides at the end, eh, one kill won't hurt me, right? Now let's skip Clooney, because this guy is a fucking saint. Who the fuck is this? Good job, man. Your movie sucked worse than a Brazzers video, but you stuck to the code. You understood the assignment. Hi, Freeze. I'm Batman. Go back to sliding off dinosaurs and sky surfing with ease, brother. Jesus, I hate Batman and Robin. Stay cool, bad boy. With Nolan's exceptional trilogy, we're led to believe that Bruce Wayne was no executioner. I mean, he did state that in Batman Begins. I'm no executioner. He told himself he wouldn't become another Joe Chill, the same culprit who gunned down his parents in that fateful alleyway. I wish we got an actual Batman this time who didn't have blood on his hands. Well, sorry to say, Christian Bale's Batman, you done fucked up, sir. In Batman Begins, he not only sets destruction to the League of Shadows' stronghold, but multiple people get blown up in the process. This also includes the fake Ra's al Ghul and those pesky ninjas lying there dead. And since he didn't kill the real Ra's al Ghul for good measure, he leaves his ass on a bullet train that derails and explodes on impact. Now that's brutal, man. But I don't have to save you. Batman sure can kill when there's loopholes involved, that's for sure. What is the point of even throwing that gun in the river if you're just going to make people blow up later on? In the Dark Knight, it seemed that Batman was going 10 for 10 on keeping his murder slate clean. That is until Harvey Dent was about to make Jim Gordon's son the main story on Gotham Nightly News. Batman literally tackles Two-Face off a 10-story balcony killing him. I get it, he had to save the kid, but there is no way you're going to survive a fall like that, and living to tell about it. Batman knew what he was doing. He had to break some necks and catch some goddamn jets. As Nolan's trilogy comes to a close, let's just put some more notches on the death bell for good measure. In The Dark Knight Rises, Batman uses his flying aircraft to bat to land some well-placed rockets and machine gun fire right into Talia Ghul's truck. You can clearly see the driver get riddled with bullets and die. This also results in Talia losing control of the vehicle and falling to the lower level of the underpass, and giving the worst on-screen death of all time for fuck's sake. I hate to break it to you, but Batman is a killer through and through. And while he did decimate some henchmen in Snyder's Batman vs Superman, his prior roots of being on screen as the ultimate grim reaper is laid in front of you for all to see. So let's take it easy on Mr. Snyder because yes, we don't like seeing Batman kill, and I guess in live action there has to be some twisted angle to his methods, but a life is a life, and this black rubber suited vigilante should be in jail. Only time will tell when Robert Pattinson's Batman decides to snap some necks for the hell of it. Hell, maybe that sharp grappling gun he might have inadvertently hits someone in the eye and kills them on impact. Lord willing. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me either way. We've been desensitized to our favorite superhero taking a life here and there. Thank you for making the world, especially Gotham, a safer place, Batman. You sadistic prick.